Ginger are a Ukrainian band blurring so many genre lines that the word progressive doesn't even begin to cover it. Whether you're into death metal or reggae, there is something here for you. The band has been touring relentlessly and is currently on a North American headline tour. Today I'm in the banger hangar with bassist Eugene and lead vocalist Tatiana. Let's chat. Oh. Comfy? <laughs> Tea. Too comfy, man. The tea. Oh no, it's good. Relax. I'm gonna piss to out. Twenty years ago, I was still asleep. <laughs> we'll we'll wake up together. We'll have some fun. And I think right off the bat, I'd like to discuss where you guys come from because it's very interesting to me. I'm well traveled, but I've never been to the Ukraine. In fact, aside from Nocturnal Mortem and Drudka, maybe Stone Jesus, there's very few bands I've ever even heard of coming out of the Ukraine. What is the musical climate there for heavy heavy bands? There is no climate. We don't have the we almost <laughs> vacuum. Don't, we vacuum. Yeah, we almost don't have this subculture. We just don't have enough fans to sustain the scene. Like most of the bands that I've heard coming from the Ukraine, there's a very strong black black metal scene and extreme metal. Black metal, yeah, well, used to be kind of strong. Let's say 15, 20 years ago, especially uh, this right wing black metal. Of course. Thing. Yes. Yeah, but. As soon as um, as soon as these political views uh, started to be treated in the way they deserve, the bands uh, lost their popularity too. It is not like that anymore. I've heard both of you reference uh, a Russian band I like a lot as an influence, Aria. Aria. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was Russian music your first exposures to heavy metal before you heard anything from North America? And have you ever heard of their other band, uh, Master, which is their thrash metal band? That's that's the real shit. Yeah, you like me. it? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ali Granovsky, the bassist from um, Master, is one of the influences for me. Definitely a standout bassist. I was working in uh, a record store for a long time, and the like Russian heavy metal from that era, like the 80s stuff that would come through, was like incredible. The Russian scene, there was something very real there about that or those early heavy metal bands there were a lot of a, a lot of heavy metal bands and now looking at the videos those old school videos taken in their shows i am really blown away by the level of their musicality and how well they played and there were at least 10 more bands who were touring all around then soviet union mm -hmm. and who were pulling stadiums at that time yeah. wow. so it was a huge thing and some people actually, they claim that heavy metal was one of the reasons why the Soviet Union collapsed. <laughs> Interesting. I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So after this Iron Curtain fell mm -hmm. and all, all these Western influences came to the Soviet Union, one of them was music and especially heavy, heavy metal that time. And it did change things drastically. For example, in 1991, there was this famous a uh, metal show in Tushino, near yeah. Moscow. Around or more than one million metal heads. That's crazy. At the same spot, at the same time. Pantera, Metallica, and ACDC, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, of course, there's like famous video from yeah, that Yeah, Domination, show, yeah. Pantera. Yeah, do yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you see uh, Pantera's in the middle of playing their sets, and then you see all the armed police, huge yes, machine guns, yes. yeah. There were very famous photos of the, the whole police. band Pantera and yeah, yeah and militia, standing, yeah, standing behind them, Russian militia. yeah, Russian or so, Soviet militia. Yes, that's crazy. What a what a historic moment in time. It is. You're a very very active band, especially in the last few years. How has the uh, busy schedule of the last few years impacted your creative process? Accelerated it. <laughs> Another level. Because, Picked it up. For example, if writing music and composing music. Uh, right now, you cannot spend uh, months or I don't know years uh, composing. So I I wrote lyrics almost every day, and then the next day I go to the studio and sing them. That, that was very stressful because I I went there unprepared. It's the third record I think now in a row which you can uh, listen and actually all most of the vocals are improvised Improvisation, and yeah. first take. That's incredible. <laughs> that's that's really <laughs> abnormal. That's very cool. I know the reason why. I really love jamming and improvising. And uh, in improvisation, I find r inspiration, like great inspiration. And as a result, a great product. It's funny to hear uh, someone in a metal band talk about jamming and improvisation because it's 
two words that are not very common in the metal scene. And they do not <laughs> match. And they do not match. Exactly. But the, uh, the good side is that we are not like 100% metal. And it helps us, especially when it comes to clean vocals. Everything she sings, it's not metal and not even sometimes rock. Mm -hmm. It's closer to jazz or rhythm and blues. And this, that is why she is able to uh, improvise this. Speaking of all the different influences, the, the riffing is incredibly uh, diverse from like old school blast beat stuff to gent breaks. Uh, reggae and soul grooves, there's something for everyone in it. Where does this desire to create such genre-blurring music come from? Well, for me, I, I hate when music that I play gets boring. So for me, I need something like to insert many, many things, you know, just like a salad, you know. I, I wouldn't eat... Only, yeah, only lettuce. lettuce. Right. Yeah. Yes. The more stuff I put there, <laughs> the better. We don't want it to be boring. And to is, ourselves. Yeah, to ourselves, first of, first of all. And the origin of it is the uh, music influences we have. Because we do not only listen to metal, we, we listen to a bunch of other styles daily. And it feels very natural for us to play what we listen to, uh, even though it is, it, might, it may be really far from metal or even hard rock or any rock, mm -hmm. rock styles. It feels natural. Like many people, my first exposure to Ginger was the Pisces video. Obviously. Um, it's amazing, and that's why it's gotten the reaction that it did. For me, it was like hearing Opeth for the first time. It was like a total Ackerfeld moment, like at the drop of a dime, being able to change your voice like that. I really haven't heard anyone do it as well as you do, aside from Michael. Mike, He's one yeah. of the best. Can you talk to me a little bit about your formal vocal training, lessons, perhaps warm-ups, and maybe some of your biggest influences? Well, this question will be very short. Yeah. I don't do warm-ups. I don't have any tutors. I just like sing every day. But my influence, yes. You Come pointed on. it out. Mikael, for yeah. sure. He's not my idol, but I admire him so much, so much. Both like being a singer and composer. For I think for most people who like this kind of music, he is... A yeah. legend. Back in the days when I joined the band, um, Randy Bly, that y you may sound similar to Randy Bly. Yeah, because Bly. I was inspired by him when I was 17. But sometimes you do sound, especially when you go low, you, you do sound like uh, Michael. Because I want to swing deep oh, yeah. <laughs> in deep oceans. Let's talk about Macro. What can we expect from Macro aside from the title obviously leading me to believe it's somewhat of a continuation? It is, yeah. Where are we headed with this journey? I think we, we, we reached the new level of diversity on this record. <laughs> because just because we had this, you know, more ingredients more space, to the salad. More space for the ingredients. Not even the ingredients to the salad, but oh, the, the bigger bowl. The plate is bigger. Yeah, the, yeah, bowl, the bowl is <laughs> bigger. The bowl is bigger now. And we, we, uh, we were able to just put more inside. I, I just keep saying that uh, this is the first record which we finally, all, all people in the band are absolutely satisfied and happy with because everything we did before had this feeling of compromise in it. This time there is no compromise. From the very beginning to the very end everything is absolutely how each of us imagined this and wanted this. New records on the way. Uh, everything's looking up for you guys right now. What is the goals and where is the band headed in the future? We never set goals like, you know, we just, we are musicians, we make music, this is the priority. After we compose and record music, we just go and play it for people. We're not thinking about anything else. If there are more people just coming to see us, better for us, but it is, it is not the priority. The priority is just this. Deliver. Delivering, yeah, the, to deliver. The priority is to deliver. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming to the studio today. Uh, really looking forward to the show tonight. Thank you very yeah, much. Nice you interview. So much. You woke me up, so. Great. Well, you got to wake me up tonight when I'm falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. okay.